Welcome to another episode of Here's Why with Mark and Eric. Eric, why are people afraid to link build? Yeah, it's a great question, Mark, but a lot of things have happened in the past year. One of those is that Google published guidelines that started to tell people that press releases were bad for links. Uh, They started talking about widgets being bad for links. They even talked about infographics potentially being bad for links. Mm -hmm. Now, those guidelines were a little bit fuzzy, but the message was clear that they saw lots of people doing things they didn't like. And then there was Matt Cutt's famous blog post of January 20th, 2014, which basically, when talking about guest posting for SEO, he said, stick a fork in it. That does actually does not sound like a ringing endorsement for the Mm -hmm. practice of guest blogging for SEO. So these things have made people afraid of uh, going out and building links. And... You know, it's also made them think that Google might not be using it in their algorithm anymore, and they've gotten that far with this. Mm. But that's not the case. Not too long ago, Matt Cutts did a video where he explained that they had tested an algorithm without links as part of it, Mm. and essentially they gave up on it. It was far worse in terms of results. So if Google still uses links, and they need links for their algorithms, for their search rankings, how do we go about getting links that Google will like? You know, there's two different things you can do. First of all, we all like this idea of being direct and going out and asking for links. You have to be very careful about that these days. Certainly the old ways that people did this in the, in the SEO industry, you, you don't want to do. What you really want to start to think about is if I'm going to ask for someone to link to my site, is that link going in a place where you might actually get traffic from it? Mm-hmm. In other words, it's the same kind of thing you might do if you were marketing your business, even if the Google algorithm wasn't there. That's a very important headset to have. Uh, And another part of that, too, is it's not about volume of links. It's about quality of links, too. Mm. So you've got to use that as a guideline. But I think perhaps even more important and more powerful is an indirect approach to building links. Hmm. And that is that... You, you build up a strong social media presence, a strong reputation in the industry, and maybe you are doing guest posting, but in the form of guest columns on people's sites yeah. as a way of building your, your reputation and your following. That way, when you start to publish good content on your blog, you can share it in your social media. You have, will have built an audience with people uh, through your various activities. Um, and then a lot of people will share that uh, to others, and that can draw links to it. This indirect method of building links is extremely powerful. It sounds a lot like PR, actually, mm, yeah. in, in some sense, mm-hmm. and there's definitely a strong relationship there, uh, although I do think there's some things you can do tactically that go a little bit beyond just what a PR agency might do. So to sum up, if you're, you're getting links out there, a uh, place you're doing guest posting or something like that, make sure it's on a place where it's relevant and where the link makes sense, you know, drives traffic that's relevant to what you're linking to on your own site. But even better, if you can create an atmosphere where you're attracting links, where people want to link to your content, that's even better. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way you should think about it these days. Great tips, Eric. Thanks. And and please join us again for the next time you'll find uh, links to all the resources that we've mentioned down in the uh, description below.